All right, so next we're going to be doing Porthole, which is a new segment. All right, check this logo out. So we've had a number of, of logos uh, made for Porthole. Uh, we, we got this one from Exploshi. This one was from Lettuce, which I think I like this one. This, this one really works for me. Uh, we got a couple more here uh, from other viewers as well. So the concept of Porthole is just terrible ports. Maybe stuff that was brought over from one console to another, and it just failed miserably. Who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe there's some good ones in here. I don't, I don't think there would be. But again, thank you if you made a porthole logo. This segment was named last week. Um, Eddie Bungetti and Jack also made logos. So... Yeah, someone literally said the name of the segment last week, and now it is real. So that's how fast these things can happen. Question is, what do we start with? Well, first we can start with me actually opening up the program so that I can play the games, and hopefully it works and I don't have to restart my computer again. It works. We have liftoff. All right, so some people submitted some ports, and there are some that I'm aware of as well that I knew were just going to be on here, because of course they would be, like Super Nintendo Doom. I mean, we could start with that. There will be uh, some games I've played before, but for the sake of the segment... Basically, you know, Doom has kind of been ported to everything. And there's some, I don't know, there's some redeeming value here. It was, a, an attempt was made. Uh, y you know, it plays on a toaster. It plays on, like, calculators. On, like, fridge. Screens. Oh yeah, on pregnancy tests as well. So Doom is probably the patron saint of Porthole, which is why I think we should start with Porthole having Doom be the first game. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not great. <laughs> it's not great. It's kind of impressive that it exists, but uh, you know, this is like last resort Doom, unless you just want to listen to the fucking soundtrack. Still miles better than the 3DO Doom. As someone who has played the 3DO Doom, yes. In fact, that is in this pack, but I don't have a means to play it again just yet. But that could definitely show up in future portholes. So the frame rates are pretty rough. Here's the positives. Okay, positives are it's Doom. It works on the Super Nintendo. And for its time, this is really impressive. If you just wanted to play Doom and you only had a Super Nintendo, you, you, you kind of could. Yeah, the music is here. The music sounds pretty okay. You can shoot. Uh, so those are the positives. I think most of the game is here. The negatives are pretty obvious, uh, but for what you may not know, I will say, it is a very sluggish game. I feel like my button inputs happen like a full second after I press them. Ugh. God. Ugh. Ugh. This port is a miracle port. Should have been impossible to ever make. It's wonderful. Fun fact, there's a level that has a misplaced enemy out of bounds. You can, can't get 100% in that level unless you put your gun in the corner and just shoot till the enemy dies. Oh, okay.
The other thing is too, like your field of view is just so small. So yes, Miracle Port it may be, but if you had literally have any other way to play Doom, aside from 3DO and probably a couple other terrible ports, I wouldn't. I mean, you can almost see some pixels. It's just like a... Like a glob of pixels in the distance, and, the, and if it moves, you know that there's an enemy there. I wonder if, like, someone these days, like, someone who maybe makes, like, ROM hacks and mods and stuff for, uh, Super Nintendo games, I wonder if they could squeeze a little bit more performance out of the Super Nintendo for this game at this point in time. They should get, yeah, nuts.wad. They should get myhouse.wad. Alright, um, yeah, movement just sucks, is the problem, because, like, y you'll just do that a lot, <laughs> even if you don't want to. But yes, it's a fascinating piece of game history. It's Doom. It is a miracle port. Oh boy, does it get really sluggish. Some of the later levels must be nightmare. Ah, uh -huh, that was a Doom joke by accident. I'll take it. massive pixels was coming at me. I was very scared. I had to shoot. Alright, so, uh, I just wanted to get the shotgun, but I think, I think I'm good. Someone, you know what? In one of the folders was Mortal Kombat. Just the original Mortal Kombat. Sculptured software. I've never heard of that. I guess... Scorpion. Scorpion. Well, I've never played Mortal Kombat 1 on the Super Nintendo. I've played Mortal Kombat 2 and 3. I had 3. I don't even know if Mortal Kombat 1 is shit. No, well, it's not bad. I'm not really sure why it was included, if it's good, but... Yeah, it's fine. No blood, no. And again, that was a big sticking point. Now, it's not something that bothers me too much, but when I was a kid, hearing that the Nintendo version didn't have blood was like, wait, what? What's the point of Mortal Kombat if not blood? It's a little slower than the Genesis version too. Do you plan on playing the 3DO port of Doom? I swear there's footage of me playing that somewhere. No blood and bad la uh, input latency. Well, it's... You know, more playable than Doom. Yeah, the input latency is a thing. Oh, you got me. Yeah! Sub -zero wins. Someone said, I can accept these fatalities, but the ones in the newer Mortal Kombat games, Jesus, no thank you, way too much. Some people <laughs> don't want to see that stuff, but that's fair enough. I think it's absolutely just over the top and insane. And I can enjoy it for what it is, which is just like comedy gore. But... I saw the trailer for the new Mortal Kombat, you know, Mortal Kombat 1. Not this game, or the other Mortal Kombat 1. The new Mortal Kombat 1. And it's... It is pretty fucking crazy. 
Like, I was even thinking to myself, is this... I know Mortal Kombat is all about this and pushing the envelope of, like... ...being able to just see people get fucking gored and dismembered, but... I was like, do I... do I want to see this? Like, maybe... Is 38 too old to enjoy Mortal Kombat people getting fucking ripped apart? And I'm terrible at this. Uh, but, regardless, I'm still interested in the game. So we go from Mortal Kombat on the Super Nintendo to Mortal Kombat on the Game Boy. Now, chat, this is... ...gonna be... This is gonna be really great. So I've played this one before, so I won't spend too much time on it. But just for the sake of this segment... I feel like, again, Doom is probably the patron saint. But Mortal Kombat is right up there, in terms of most ported games. MK4 Game Boy Color is best ported game. Even better than this, because look at this. That's right, this was shipped, and people were, like, making this, and someone said, yeah, no, that's good enough. What? Is Raiden's name spelled... or Raiden... spelled wrong, or... Was it always Raiden? Spelled wrong. Uh, Vinny, please tell me Primal Rage is in this. It might be, but I'll tell you what. I'm sure this segment will be back. A number of people have submitted suggestions and ideas, which, by the way, always appreciated. Thank you for submitting Sunday Stream content, even if it doesn't show up, or if it takes a year to show up. But, uh... Yeah, for something new like this, it's it's fun to have people compile their own worst ports. This might be one of the worst things I've ever played. <laughs> I know you hear that every Sunday, but this is genuinely... Like, I've played it- like I said, I've played this one before. It's fucking painful. They would have been better off developing another, like, game from scratch for the Game Boy. Still better than the Gamecom version? I don't know if it is. Imagine if you got this for Christmas instead of other Mortal Kombat. You know, that happened to me a couple times. Not from Mortal Kombat, but there were games that I would get on the Game Boy because they were cheaper. And they weren't as good. Like, I was getting Mega Man games on the Game Boy more than I was on the Nintendo. And they weren't, like, terrible, terrible, but they weren't as good. I'm genuinely trying to play, like, and, and be good, chat. And, uh... The input lag... The frame rates, the- the everything. It's just really, really painful. We're jumping all over the place. So, let's stick with Mortal Kombat, and we'll go to the Game Boy Advance. This is Mortal Kombat Advance. This I don't think I played. Now keep in mind, the GBA should be able to handle a game like this. These are like the MK3 sprites. I have played this. Oh. 13 years of streaming will do that to you. Fight! Nice hitboxes. 
Is this the only music? I love my character variations of Red Ninja, Yellow Ninja, Blue Ninja, Green Ninja, Purple Ninja, Gray Ninja. I don't know any of Ermac's moves. Okay, listen, compared to what I just played, obviously this is better, but this is still janky as fuck. With really bad hitboxes and tiny music loops. Oh god. There are no special moves? No. What do you mean there are no special moves? It's true they just didn't program them in. There's just a few special moves. The enemy gets them, but you don't. We went over this last time you played this. There's barely any special moves minus a few characters. Well, I'm sorry. I don't... I'm, I try not to... Like, I don't have a lot of room in my hard drive. And... I would think that the memory of shitty games usually probably gets wiped first. That's why I don't remember a lot of this stuff. I know about the game's reputation, but I didn't actually have any specific memory of playing it. It's, it's pretty rough. Just sliding around. Oh. I still would rather play this than the Game Boy one. And this is fucking terrible. You don't even feel like you're hitting anyone. Oh, I found a special move. I found one. And it's gone. As quick as I found it. Oh, wait. No, no. I think I got it. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, chat. 2002. Midway was on a roll. I have to be honest. Mortal Kombat has always been... and always will be... kind of an iffy hit-or-miss franchise for me. Like, I loved Mortal Kombat 2 and 3, and then it was just, like, lots of shit sandwiches. Yeah, load that. Lo load. Okay, great. What do we do now? Oh, okay. Just, just, do, just play the game. Play the game. Oh boy. Oh, this one I definitely haven't played. Now, chat, this Deadly Alliance game, what was the first release of this? Was this arcade or like PS2? It was PS2. Okay, console. So this is their attempt to bring a PS2 game to GBA. Um, maybe better hitboxes than the previous game, at least. A little painful to look at, but... 
it's still like smooth. It was the game with zombie Liu Kang. I don't I don't even I don't even know. Again, I didn't play Mortal Kombat for many, many, many years, which is why I'm kind of happy they're starting over again. Because I don't even want to have to think of, like, a continuity. Wrong. Yeah, this isn't as bad. It's just kind of... Just kind of... basic. The new game is part of the continuity. Well, fuck. Oh shit, you can choose between Muay Thai and Judo. Yeah, no, this is way better than the previous game. Like, you, you kind of, even if you're being cheesy, you kind of feel like you're actually playing a game and hitting people, like, with your moves. Could have been worse. Definitely could have been worse, and we've seen a million ways how it could have been. Okay. So, let's say, alright, Mortal Kombat, of course, has had a million ports, but did you know Street Fighter also had a lot of ports? I don't know how many of these Street Fighter ports are in this collection, and I might have played this at some point. But... I'll give it a shot. Yeah, the, the Game Boy just was not really handling games like this. Better than Mortal Kombat, at least. Looks and sounds good. The gameplay uh, kind of it sucks a little bit because you just kind of... You just kind of, like, teleport around a little. But at least when you press a move button, it does it relatively quickly. Game Boy was not made for fighting games. I mean, the, the Nintendo was barely made for fighting games. If you see some of the attempts to backport... Still not bad. I mean... We've seen various ways to botch fighting games on a, on a Game Boy. And even GBA. And uh, this is actually kinda playable. Street Fighter 2! Alright, honey, we'll get you Street Fighter 2 on the Game Boy. No, Mom! Honey, it was $20 cheaper. Probably even more than that. Alright, honey, listen. I know you like your video games, so I got you this GameCom. Some angry, some angry fellow told me that I needed to get this for you, otherwise you you were a baby. Yeah, the music is still good. Yeah, Ken's theme is awesome. I, and also, just, just Capcom firing on all cylinders for these games at this time. 
early 90s Capcom. I mean, Capcom just... Mega Man, Street Fighter, fucking uh, UN Squadron has some great tunes. Yoko Shimomura. Yeah. Can we hear Guile's theme? I would like to hear Guile's theme. Again, I'll be playing the new Street Fighter at the end of the week, more than likely, so... Just getting prepared, everybody. I don't know when I'm gonna be fighting Guile. Is there an easy way to hear Guile's theme? Actually, there is. It's called YouTube. sound test menu. This was not a low-effort port. This was a genuine attempt to get Street Fighter 2 on the Game Boy. The hardware does not fully allow it. But it still kind of feels like Street Fighter a little bit. Play it anywhere else. Alright. Let's take a look and see what else we have here. Um, so, someone named Quentin submitted a full porthole, and also a custom logo, which is appreciated, even if I'm not using it. I think it's, I think it's a pretty good I like the porthole. That's pretty fun. Right into the toilet. There's just something really great about that. But, you know, we've got some notes here, too. Quentin was kind enough to provide notes. So, do we want to do... Do we want to go all the way back? I think we should. I think we should. How about Donkey Kong? Oh, yeah. We're going all the way back to the past to play the shitty games that are bad. Coleco. Uh, wow, I don't even have the means to play this. Ugh. I don't know. Oh, God. Uh, binding ColecoVision controls is going to be a fucking nightmare, so just bear with me. One. One. Level one, that's fine. Oh my god. I like that Jumpman is actually, like, kind of... What would you say, Chad? Is that like a periwinkle? Well, even binding the controls, I still cannot move this fake Jumpman. The Intellivision version is of note for being made by Coleco while their console was still on the market. The port was bad enough with its ugly graphics and stiff gameplay that Mattel accused Coleco of intentionally making a bad port. 
2600 version included uh, due to being forced to be on a 4 kilobyte cartridge instead of a larger 8 kilobyte one. Both versions only include two out of four levels from the arcade version. All right, well, I can't even fucking move in that one. Oh, that looks a little bit more like Mario, I guess. Oh, hey, I can actually control him this time, chat. Yeah, this is... Well, this is definitely 2600. <laughs> Donkey Kong! Look at Donkey Kong! Oh, he's amazing! He's amazing. Fucking Mario is all red. Oh, oh boy. I mean, it's not, again, the most ideal way of playing Donkey Kong, which at the time would have been the arcade, and then later the NES had a pretty good version of it. But it is definitely functional, and has, like, decent controls for what it is. Except, I think you just saw all the levels in the game. Pretty sure that's what's going on right now. Back in my day, we would pay $60 to get two levels, and we loved it. I think I just hit a game over. Double Dragon. Baffling attempt to port the classic beat em up to a console that simply can't handle it. It's an impressive attempt, but the fact that it exists is really the only thing that makes it interesting. The music was unsurprisingly butchered in the port. Different moves are used by combining a direction with the Atari's only button. <laughs> Good luck figuring out the controls while the first enemies you see are kicking your ass. I'm ready. Just game one is fine. Oh boy. It sure looks like Double Dragon to me. Oh my fucking god, it's awful. This is one of those trial by fire kind of games where if you're a kid and you get this for like b birthday or Christ, you're gonna have to deal with it. And just figure it out by dying a thousand times, and then quitting and never touching the game again. Yeah, th these enemies just cheat. They just cheat, and they both died. Why did they both die? I don't know. I'm- thank you, but why? That was quick. I almost want to play it again, now that I know how to play it. In quotation marks, chat. But listen, if the cartridge had that cool art, the Double Dragon art, that and the name Double Dragon, that was all that was needed. Not much else required. And thus, the crash of the video game market. Now, I know people want to blame E.T., and yes, E.T. was a huge part of it, but there was so much low-quality shit that was just not creating the arcade experience on the Atari. Well, I did worse that time.
Pac-Man, probably the most infamous bad port, so I had to include it. Barely resembles the arcade game, and the ghosts are constantly flickering. Every ghost is the same color, so it's unlikely each one has a unique pattern like the arcade version. For some reason, the fruit uh, prize is replaced by a yellow and brown square. God, that is painful. Oh, oh my god. I love that they couldn't even make the pellets, like, square. They had to... They had to do, like, rectangle pellets. For as shitty as the world can be, just be thankful this isn't the video games that you grew up with. And truthfully, this isn't the video games I grew up with. My cousin that I talk about had Atari and had ColecoVision and a couple other things. And this was the stuff that I would go over his house and see. Never the club co uh, cousin, ever. And uh, I would see stuff like this. And I mean... There was also, like, more simulation stuff, like, on the, the home PC. Like, I guess they were... What was it? Was it Commodore 64? It was something like that. Maybe it was in television. It had, like, a keyboard. So he had, like, more complex games that he knew how to play. And I found that very impressive. But I also... was very intimidated. I was like, boy, I just want to play my Mario game. Let's see. Miss Pac-Man is included in this folder for comparison to show that a good port of the game was possible on the hardware. So this is this is Miss Pac-Man now. Oh wow, Miss Pac-Man actually faces the way that you move. That's amazing. This is way better. The difference in the controls alone is, like, astounding. And the ghosts don't flicker. Well, you know what? I wouldn't say it's an astounding difference, but it's a huge difference. It's enough of one that I would never, if I was playing video games as, like, a rad 80s kid with a mullet and, like, a jean jacket, man... I would only play Miss Pac-Man. I wouldn't even bother with the uh, pack sack. Dude's a chump. Mullets are back, dude. You know what the worst part is? You're right. You're. I saw someone probably in their like early twenties with a mullet, and like it was. Yeah, it was all greased up too. It was like a greasy mullet here in New York. Hey man, whatever. If if you like it, if a mullet's your thing, it's just amazing how made fun of that was. That was like the universal, like, wow, you have a mullet, you're lame. And like fashion and trends just are cyclical. So I'm hoping depressed, sad, like sad man, dirty sad man music will come back in fashion. <laughs> no, 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 not emo. You know what? No, 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 no. <clears throat> that that I'd prefer not to come back just because it's not my generation. Um, you know, if we could just get some, like, dirty music back, like, grungy, dirty, dirt grunge, disenfranchise. Oh, that's really cool noise. John Teeter had a mullet. The worst part is I know who that is. All right, listen. We got some ports here. I've played Athena. I rented Athena. This was a bad rental. Port of an SNK game, weird jump physics, annoying music, janky attack animations, ugly flickering graphics. I played this on, like, bad NES games on the stream. I thought it looked good from the box art. I think there was a sword. Usually, if you wanted me to rent your video game, put a sword on the cover.
Nice, uh, gaping trees. Wait, there's no swords here. Man. Yeah, this is one of those things, chat, when I rented it. In my mind, I didn't know, like, what the game's name was until very, very many years later. But, in my mind, this game looked amazing. Like... It was just, like, incredible looking. Oh, there is a sword. There you go. Yeah, it's a little awkward. I mean, that's the best way to describe it, is just awkward. King's Quest, Quest for the Crown. I don't think I've played this one, let's see. Port of the first King's Quest... ...to Master System. While not as bad as other ports on this list, the uh, awkward translation of a text parser to controller doesn't do the game any favors. Okay. It's pretty unintuitive to figure out each of the two buttons has a corresponding menu of commands, one static, the other dynamic. The game is frustrating from the start since you're likely to fall into the moat and discover that the computer version save feature has been replaced by passwords. Oh god. You're in the deadly water, there is no hope. You are standing outside a castle, surrounded by an alligator-filled moat. We are sorry you have not succeeded. The greatest quests are often the most dangerous. Do-do-do-do-do-do. <laughs> this is universal failure music. Okay, we're going to be going kind of quick through some of these, chat. Sierra Online. Oh, okay, yeah, they published Half-Life, like you were saying, chat members. Despite the original version of the game and this port using a point-and-click interface, it's even worse than the Master System game with its ugly graphics and slow cursor. That sounds great to me. Right in the porthole, everybody. Absence makes the heart go yonder. Yeah, I've played this game before. Uh. Yeah, that's, that's pretty rough. That's pretty rough. The door to Crispin's house is now locked. Well, hey, progress. It's not an alligator-filled moat. Watch out, a poisonous snake. I mean, it's just an adventure game of, the, of its time, but... I don't know how much of this I would have actually liked as a kid. I probably would have got bored. I wanted to hit something with a sword or a baseball bat or something. 
Watch out for the bear. Nice. Oh, fuck, that's kinda... That's kinda gnarly, chat. You sh shouldn't feed the bears, Graham. Maniac Mansion. A Japan-exclusive port of the computer game that's different from the one released in the U.S. It's a downgrade compared to the version we got, apparently. There's like 200 ways to die in King's Quest in every one. That's kind of cool. I think I played... This seems familiar. This, this might have been a recent thing. It is. Okay, yeah. This has some really painful sounds. Oh, I remember this. Yeah, I played this... What, what? I don't remember which version I played, but... It showed up on stream at some point in recent memory, so... Answer the phone? Oh no, that's the music, chat. Back in my day, this was music! The Last Ninja. Despite the name, this is actually a port of the Commodore 64 game, The Last Ninja 2. The Statue of Liberty? Um... Is that supposed to be vibrating? Wait, is this new order? How does it feel? Yeah, it sounds like fucking Blue Monday. This is- this is painful to play this. Oh. <laughs> Chat, this is- this is like, astoundingly... Bad. You just kick each other in the fucking balls until one of you dies. Like, just ruptured ball death. What?! He's not dead! Not even, like, facing this enemy. That, that vibrating UI is, like, the worst UI I think I've ever seen. I don't know how to get down there. Using and holding? I, I'm pressing all the buttons, I've got nothing. Alright, chat. You know, I missed one before. I missed Mortal Kombat 4. 
on the Game Boy Color. Yeah. This is one that chat mentioned immediately when I started talking about Mortal Kombat ports. So, yeah. This one's going to be pretty bad, I think. They just shit these things out. They didn't even give a fuck. They, they had no quality control on these portable Mortal Kombats. This is the absolute worst one, says a chat member. Okay, I'll be the judge of that. Oh! Wait, the start button is block? That's so fucked. Round one. Fight! Round one. I just make the music a little louder. I want to enjoy the music with you. Chat, here. And the only positive here is that the extra power of the Game Boy Color improves the frame rates. Otherwise, there was nothing put into this. Yeah, why is the screen shaking? Like, is the cameraman getting pulped? Who's on camera? <laughs> like, what's going on with them? The characters are hitting the ground so hard that the crew is suffering permanent damage. Flimsy Tripod. That sounds like a good band name, chat member. What's the name of this character? Um, Sub-Zero versus Reiko? I thought it said Retko. I see... Reiko using a move. That's not words. Is this just gonna be the same music the whole time? Vinny, do a fatality, you have to say- I have no idea how to do a fatality. One level! One level, one song! Oh, thank you. We finally have some new instruments. Got some beep boops. You know what's cool? Sometimes you kick right through enemies. The hitboxes don't make any sense. You could just punch them in the head. Sometimes it registers. Like, a lot of times you don't know if it's gonna register. Is this Radiohead? Yeah, this is Miximatosis. New level. How nice of them to actually add new instruments and parts to a song when they know it's the only song in the game. How nice. Yeah, hitboxes are bad, um, moves barely work, you can... What was that? Was that a glitch slide? Oh, I think that's a move. Oh, I figured out how to do one move with uh, Sub-Zero, chat. Sin itself is not as ugly as this game. I really don't want to. So that's why we're gonna do... Sonic the Hedgehog. 
on the GBA. Chad, if you wonder why I don't particularly love Sonic games, it's because 90% of the memory that I have left of Sonic is just shitty games that I've played on a Sunday. I already played this... Yes, I know I've played a lot of bad Sonics. I wasn't sure if I played this one in particular, but sure. I have to lower this. The screen is so small. It would have been better if the screen was actually... Like, if the game was adapted to the screen. Which is to say, zoom out a bit. It's not one of the worst ports I've played tonight, at least. Like, it's... Probably not great, but... I just played Mortal Kombat 4 on the Game Boy Color. I think this is... This is like fucking Van Gogh. Compared to that. Oh boy, okay, this is a little rough. From what I've read, the port devs were not given tools from the original game, so they basically copy-paste the original game's assets on Sonic Advance's engine, and this is what we got. Sonic's own worst enemy is it is Sonic. Actually, that's not true. Sonic's own worst enemy is Sega. And I don't I, listen, I'm not even a Sonic fan, nor do I hate Sonic. I know I joke about it and I like to do the voice and everything, but I like the movies and I like Sonic 3 quite a bit. But I just feel bad for like yeah no when I was a kid I hated Sonic now I only I only hate his feet but I don't you know I don't have any dog in this race is what I'm trying to say but I just feel bad that Sonic has been so mismanaged and mishandled and then there are people who actually like will die on the hills of the, the worst games in the series and find ways to justify why they're actually in fact good. And if you're, sp uh, like, speaking strictly of, um, Mario versus Sonic, which I think is just dumb because there's so many platformers out there, but if you are gonna do that... At least Mario has had, like, kind of a higher hit rate than failure rate. I know Sonic has had plenty of successes as well, but then there's stuff like this. However... Again, not as bad as Mortal Kombat. Still playable. Doesn't feel like Sonic should, even if I'm not the most uh, preeminent authority on Sonic the Hedgehog. But there he is. Okay, so this one's called R-Type 3. It's a port of the SNES shoot-em-up. The music is tinny and almost sounds like it's coming out of a GameCom. The hit detection's bad, and apparently the porting team didn't even have access to the game's original source code. So, here we go. Man, again, if you want to talk about the worst of the worst, this isn't one of them. Just based on controls alone. The music is, however, extremely... like, bland? Tinny is a good way to put it. It's very zoomed in, it's very slow. 
the music. Wait. Are, are there notes being played outside of the scale? Wow, this is like microtonal King Gizzard experimentation. Yeah, it's a little penisy. It's like space penisy. I could just listen to the music and, and just have that be the entire segment. Damn, I'm good. Okay. Duke Nukem. Less of a port, more of an adaptation to work with the Genesis hardware. Still not very good, though. Have I played this? I don't think... This might be... Oh, God. It's okay, I don't mind repeats, as long as the segment is all cohesive, like... ...and the game is truly hilarious and terrible. I'm fine with it. Still better than the GameCom version. Everything is better than GameCom version of anything. I actually haven't. F oh, say I hadn't figured out how to shoot. Um. So this is not a Duke Nukem level that I'm familiar with. It's just Wolfenstein. I probably said this- if I played this before, that's exactly what I said last time. Wait, what? Oh, that's the map. Well, they, they had to... For some reason, they needed to get Duke on the Genesis, and they couldn't... They couldn't do it as is, so we get this instead. I mean, the frame rates are better than Doom on the Super Nintendo, at least. It's also... Where'd that thing go? Awful. Okay, if you want to strafe, you have to hold the B button and the X button is shoot. Now, what I'm trying to say is it, these are two buttons that aren't normally compatible with each other. Bottom and top button, basically. So, so that's how you run, uh, strafe and also shoot. Down to 4 HP. I'm, I'm actually trying to, like, I'm not just taking the piss here. I actually wanted to try to complete the level. I don't think I want to, though. I, in fact, I think that would be that would be pretty terrible. Captain America and the Avengers. Arcade beat em up that suffered when brought to home console. 
What's notable is that enemies get post-hit invulnerability just like the player does, making fights more of a slog. Okay, go, and then I still have to wait here. Chat. I know that we're repeating bits, but what am I if not repetitious? Ready, go! I'll handle this. Oh, this isn't the no. Rob Liefeld Captain America. No. The superior Captain America. No. Oh yeah, that invulnerability is a little rough, isn't it? Well, that and the controls are fucking terrible. fuck is supposed to be, but I'm just gonna try to... Oh, never mind. Don't interfere, Avenger! If you told someone when this game came out that the Avengers would be, like, the biggest film franchise of all time, 30 years from then, they would be like, no, you're having a laugh, aren't you? Because it's so... It, comic book stuff... Like... It, it just seems, to an outsider's perspective, very silly. Like, okay, this Iron Man guy shoots, like, lasers from his fist? <laughs> or whatever? I don't know, I, I thought it too. Like, as a kid, I, I just did not get into comic books. And I thought that the superhero stuff with their tights and their spandex and their, like... Throbbing, like, veins... I, I didn't really get it. It wasn't my thing. I liked other things. This is, by the way, abysmal gameplay. And, uh, I wouldn't have believed it. Because I would have thought, like, oh, like, smack, crackle, pop, it would have been so cheesy with, like, words on the screen, like the Batman show from the fucking 60s. But, no. In defense of comic books, comic book fans agree that the 90s was very fucking weird. Fair enough. Just sh keep shooting, huh? Just keep shooting. Yeah, this is, this is bad. Pit Fighter is, uh, when I was a kid, I remember hearing about this game being one of the worst games on the system. And, uh, I've played this. This has been in a previous segment of mine, for sure. But it, it is worth seeing again. It's just a terrible port. Just like the movement is so unnatural and jittery. Like the pod people in the background cheering on. Oh, when you die, you just turn gray. You get the gray scale, I guess. One life, no continues, no fun. That's it, chat. You just witnessed it. That's pit fight. That's pit fighter. <laughs> Hmph! <laughs> 
it, it's so, like, indescribably terrible to try to play this game. Race driving. I've played this one too. This has definitely shown up on the on the stream in various forms. But you, if you have not seen it, I think it would be great for you to see it right now. Also, a Game Boy version, Game Boy Advance version, which I'll be showing you as well. But uh, uh oh. I didn't know this was a port. Oh. <laughs> didn't someone make a custom fix for this? I think they did. Yeah, we had the discussion, but it belongs here. I just don't have any specific things to say about it here. Um, early 3D game that was ported to the Super Nintendo without the FX chip. Game Boy version included to show a better port of the same game on weaker hardware. Oh, that is new to me, I think. That should be fascinating. Oh, music was sacrificed. Wait, this is the better version? This is actually activating my tinnitus. Uh... Yeah, I, I don't- I don't know if this is, uh, good. I mean, relatively better. Yeah. It's all relative. There are moments where the frame rates actually... ...are not single digits. That's kind of amazing. I mean... The fact that there's some level of a 3D engine... ...on the Game Boy, the original Game Boy hardware, and it kind of runs... ...is something of a small miracle. But what a mistake this would be. God, imagine... Imagine playing this on actual Game Boy Cabbage Green, like, streaky, ghosting... ...like, hardware. Is that another car? Imagine, like, you show your grandfather, who loves, like, cars and racing, like, watches a lot of racing, uh, things. Game over. You're like, oh, I got a racing game on my Game Boy, and you show him this, and he's like... Video games are terrible, and I will never play them. I have one more thing to show you here, on the Dreamcast... ...of all things. Sega Smash Pack Volume 1. So, I don't, I don't have any information about this. Is this supposed to be terrible? Very bad sound driver? Oh my god! I want to hear the, the rise from your grave. Rise from your grave. That's when the cannibalism started. Rise from your grave. I, 
I had this thing on 20% volume and it still sounded loud as fuck, so I'm gonna get that down to 10%. The emulation was so fucking bad, the devs were ashamed of it. They gave instructions on how to pirate the game in the source code. <laughs> I mean, otherwise it's just kind of... Oh. How do you... Where are the power-ups? Oh, sorry, none. Um... How do you exit this? I mean, I don't want to do that in between every game. You like my cool, real Dreamcast? Very cool. There's probably a shortcut of, like, press three buttons at the same time. Let's see what Sonic sounds like. Off key. Yeah, was his arm like missing? was on the wrong layer? Oh, that explains it. He was in front of the logo. It's pretty... Yeah, it's pretty painful to listen to. I mean, it plays better than Sonic on the GBA, at least. Complete one level, maybe? For no good reason. Yeah, complete the level. Just complete the level! Please do Streets of Rage? Okay. Chet said, hold L and R to change games. I am trying. That does not seem to work. I tried L R R T, L T R T, L and R. L R start. Pressed all the buttons, chat. Pressed all of them. Listen, it's getting late anyway. And uh, unfortunately, some of the segments were pulped and or uh, filled with disgusting mobile ads. Uh, so it's time, to, time for me to get some sleep.
pretty fucking tired. Make a save state at game select. Smart. Genius chat members. But we can check out like a couple other games here real quick just to hear some cool music. Oh god. Oh, that's really, really rough. Did you just get locked into this attack animation? OST for this is considered one of the best of all time. That's good that you told me that, because I would have just walked away from this thinking, man, the Streets of, Streets of Rage soundtrack is shit. How's your tinnitus now? Oh, I'm, I'm fucked for, for tinnitus. For tonight. Waiting for tinnitus. Oh! Can I get the original of this for comparison, chat? I don't know the name of the song. Instant improvement. Way better. Uh, I don't know what else there is in this collection of games that would be worth checking out. Because again, I don't know the originals. I know Vector Man a little bit. I could just tell you if it hurts my ears. Oh god. Oh no! Oh, that's fucking horrendous! Couldn't they delay the game to figure out the sound chip? No, the gameplay's fine. It's just, you know, I'm sure there's other emulation issues I'm unaware of, but like Sonic and the wrong layer, but sound effect wise, this is actually 
like painful. It's it's actually really painful. I was gonna say like, could you imagine listening th through a whole game and hearing this? Um, I guess, uh, we could do Fantasy Star real quick. Love to hear Shining Force on this sound chip. Sure. Yeah, unfortunately, it would take a little too long to really get into the meat of the game, so... Y you just have to listen to this and make your own judgment. This doesn't sound great, but that's kind of the theme here. Uh, Shining Force, was it? Okay, chat member wants me to check out Shining Force. This will be the last one. This was the last North American Dreamcast game released. Well, that's just a fucking shame. This might be the worst one yet. Good morning, everybody, and that was only at 35% volume. Call me, just whatever, just, I, we need to hear one more song and then we'll just stop forever. Ack! It's my reaction to the music. Great sounds. Thank you for watching Porthole. Everybody that made a logo that submitted, I appreciate it. There's definitely potential here. If you... And thank you, Quentin, for putting together a text file, too. I like that. A little bit of information goes a long way. If you um, have any ideas for good, uh, you know, well, terrible games, or at least interesting ports, uh, send them my way. But I do think the nature of the words port and hole put together imply that the games will suck. <laughs> Alright, well, that's enough for this. Port, port hub.
Good night, everyone. Thank you for watching, and thanks for the subs and all the other stuff. I'll see you during the week. We'll play some Zelda. We'll play some other stuff. Street Fighter at the end of the week, more than likely. And at some point, I'll have my uh, Generation Loss and Abandoned Mall behind the scenes video that I'll, I'll debut live and talk about my experiences. Should be fun. Beautiful music. Oh, man. So beautiful. It'd be so beautiful. All right, goodbye, good night, see ya. works the same way as it does for those systems, but Nintendo 3DS comes with an extending stylus. Hello, little stylus. Hello, Mario.